We're going to be taking a look at some of the more basic ideas of probability here today. And uh, so we have a little scenario here for you. Suppose 32% of American adults have blonde hair, 48% of them have brown eyes, and 21% of them have both. Well, first off, we could do what's called creating a Venn diagram. And uh, what you would do is, since uh, we have blonde hair, I'm going to go ahead and write blonde over here. And we also have people that have brown eyes. I'm going to go ahead and put brown over here. So basically what we have is we have two circles that intersect. And we know 21% have both. So I'm going to go ahead and put 21% here in the middle. And in order to fill the rest of it out, what we know is, for instance, on brown hair, we know 48% have brown hair. But we already have 21% that have both of blonde and brown hair. So what we do is, what's 48 minus 21? Well, that's 27. So that means 27% of people have brown eyes, but do not have blonde hair. Likewise, over here, we have 32% of all adults have blonde hair, and 21 is already accounted for in here. So 32 minus 21 is 11%. So 11% would go here. And if you were to add these all up together, 27, 21, and 11, that's 59%, which means 41% would be none of the above. And so once you have your Venn diagram created here, what you can do is you can use that to solve other problems. And the first thing I want to talk about today is the whole idea of something called conditional probability. And what that means is conditions are attached to it. So for instance, on, on this one over here, it says, what's the probability the person is blonde given the person has brown eyes? So rather than just saying, hey, what's the chance the person is blonde? Well, that's easy. Blonde would be 32%. However, if we put a condition on it like this, the person, we know the person has brown eyes, that narrows it down. It's not all people. It's only the 48% of people that have brown eyes. So how do we do that? What we do is, we basically, we can write it out like this. What is the probability the person is blonde? And in math, what we do is we use this line right here to symbolize given the person has brown eyes. So what comes second is what we would call the given information, and it narrows things down here. So that is given to us. And that is the part that kind of narrows down the whole field here. So it's not all people. It's only the people that have brown eyes. And so the formula for figuring that out, just to show you what that looks like, looks something like this over here. Actually, let me go ahead and just delete it all out here. And it says the probability of event B happening given A has already occurred. So this blonde would be the B event, and brown would be the A event here. It equals the probability, this means intersection. That means the probability of both occurring divided by the chance of just the given information occurring. So this is both, and this one is given. So how would that work in this situation right over here? Well, we know the given part is brown hair. So what percent of all people have brown hair? Well, we know that answer already. 48% do. So that's going to go on the bottom. So really, we're only looking at 48% of the population. The top of the fraction is both. So what is both? Well, both is right here, 21%. And 21% uh, divided by 48% ends up being 0.438. So the answer that if we knew you have brown eyes, what's the chance that you're also blonde would be 40, almost 44% chance. Now, you can also reverse it over here. So this is the exact opposite over here. So this would be the probability that someone has brown eyes given they have blonde hair. So once again, we have the B event is here. This is the A event because it's already happened. That's our given info here. So what we would do is this. We would say, hey, well, blonde narrows things down dramatically. Blonde is just 32% of the population. So that's going to go here. And the top is both blonde and brown eyes. And that would be 21%. And if you took 21% divided by 32%, uh, you'd wind up with 0.656, or you know, almost 66%. So definitely, the order matters here. What's given to you matters. It cha can change the answer dramatically here if you reverse it. All right, so the other big idea that I want to talk about in this video is the idea of what we call independent events. So once again, using the same information up here about blonde hair and brown eyes, are having blonde hair and having brown eyes independent events. In, order, in other words, does one influence the other? So this is our Venn diagram we just came up with here a minute ago. And basically, it comes down to this. They are independent if the probability of the B event happening is the same as the probability of the B event happening given A has. So for instance, over here, let's say, uh, let's say we call this a and, and this B here. So what, let's figure out this. What is the probability of having brown eyes? 
Well, the probability of having brown eyes is up here. It's 48%. So we already know that here. So, and then what happens is what if we go ahead and find this answer? What's the probability of brown eyes given that we know you have blonde hair? And a moment ago we figured that out, but let's go ahead and do that again. So this is the given information down here. So the given blonde is a total of 32% over here, so that goes on the bottom. Both would be 0.21, and together that would end up being 0.656. So obviously these two answers here, 48%, and this answer over here, 65.6%, are not equal. So because 0.48 does not equal 0.656, these events are not independent. So you might be asking yourself right now, well, what would independent events look like? So I have an example of that as well here. So here's a different one. We have 75% of American adults have children, 60% uh, are married, and then 45% are both married and have children. So if we have children over here, if we have married over here for our Venn diagram here, both would be 45%. Uh, we know that 60% are married, and since we've already accounted for 45%, that leaves 15% over here. Uh, as far as children go, we, are, we know it's 75% of children. That's already 45, so that's 30% left over. And together, 30 and 15 is 45. 45 and 45 is 90, so that means 10% have none of the above. So once again, it, you know, we're going to go ahead and use this formula right here. It, it, there are independent events if this is true. So it doesn't really matter which one you call A and B. So the, I'm going I'm to mix up this time. I'm going to call this one the B event and this one the A event. So let's go ahead and do that here. So what is the probability of being married? If we just pick somebody at random here, that person is 60% are married. So that's the answer for that, 60%. Now, what if we said, hey, what's the chance that this person is married if we knew they also have children? So this is narrowing things down here. This event has already happened. That's our given event. So how does this work here? Well, what is given? Given would be the percentage of people that have children. And as it says up here, 75% of American adults have children. So 75% would go right over here. Uh, for the top, it would be combo, married and children, both. That's 45%. And if you were to go ahead and take your calculator right now and take 45% and divide by 75%, that would be 0.60. So because these two answers are equal, that means these events are yes, they are independent. So that's a quick look at Venn diagrams, conditional probability, and the whole idea of, a, of independence with probability.